or blemish. This was achieved by a new system of computer restoration of old recordings. Developed at Cambridge, it's a world leader in sound technology. Ian Williams looks at the process which is bringing new life to old recordings. From a small Cambridge office, the scratched and crackling strains of the Louis Armstrong Hot Fives 1928 classic, Big Fat Ma and Skinny Pa. Later that day, the same recording sounds like this. Big fat ball, it's getting ball, wanna do a dance, you never saw. It's the result of a new system of restoring old and damaged records, developed by scientists at Cambridge University. The computer system's being launched commercially by a company called Cedar Audio a joint venture between cable and wireless, the communications giant, and the British Library's National Sound Archive. We're able to load the entire music content of a recording into our computers, and then carry out a series of processes within the computers, which identify and then remove the various sorts of degradation that can occur on a record or tape, such as hiss or scratches, other types of surface noise, or even a breakage in an early 78 record. A restored version of this, Sir Adrian Bolt conducting Holt's The Planets at Walthamstow Town Hall in 1953, was the first to be released, but there are hundreds more on the way. At the heart of the system is computer software able to detect and then remove a series of flaws in the original. Here we see the signal before it's been processed or analysed by the computer, and I can point out um, some problems here. These these will sound as scratches, these sharp peaks in the signal. So the computer goes on and analyzes the signal. The following analysis, what's shown in blue is where the computer has found an unwanted noise that it would like to get rid of. And all of those spikes that we saw before have been taken out. An additional stage is to remove the hiss that remains on the waveform. There we are. You can see this is before and this is after processing. You can see that the computer has taken out the jaggedness of the hiss, leaving behind the signal waveform, which is all, this, all of this shape. One of CEDAR's first projects was restoring an old, unidentified 78, found broken in half in the engineering labs in Cambridge. Home to the scenes of my childhood days, to hear again. Well, the effect is extraordinary. It, 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 it peels off an entire layer of scratches and dirt and things that made the original recording quite unlistenable because if you know that a scratch is going to come up three or four times every couple of seconds like a metronome, your ear is going to be waiting for it and your concentration, your listening is going to be disturbed and made unpleasant. Without those scratches, it's a completely new experience and you can hear great artists like Toscanini and Caruso and so forth almost in the flesh. The National Sound Archive in London has plenty of raw material. More than one million records are stored here, some of very poor quality. It's one of the biggest collections in the world and includes almost 200,000 78s. I think that um, you could say that we will have failed if there is no sort of, if there are any sort of records which um, we can't tackle. At the moment, that's certainly not true. We do run into um, damaged records and recordings uh, which are impossible. Sometimes um, we're given sort of miraculous uh, qualities. The Swedes, for example, sent over some early recordings for us to try uh, with gaps of about a second or two in them and obviously no one can fill a gap of a second or two. Record companies PRT and EMI are CEDAR's first customers. They believe many early recordings, which hitherto they wouldn't have looked at twice, can be sold on compact disc. Sales are very high on compact disc remastered recordings because of the um, classical boffs who actually do want uh, these old recordings. They remember the 50s recordings of the 50s, the 60s and the 70s and like. 
and that it does uh, need historically for people to have these things in their record collections. A number of methods have been tried already to clean up old recordings, so why is a SIDAR method so much better? The previous processes uh, fall into the category of what I would call enhancement. That is, people have taken very good copies of early records and then enhanced them by using modern digital techniques, such as a little bit of digital filtering or uh, uh, adding reverberation and ambience. Really, that gives a modern feel and a modern sound to the recording, but it isn't actually restoring it back to what it was before the damage occurred. Turning one dusty 78 into a clean digital audio tape costs around £180. So the first customers are likely to be record companies and television. Dame Eva Turner, now 98 years old, is one of the first individuals to use the system. All that was left of her 1933 record of Elizabeth's greeting from Wagner's Tannhauser were three broken pieces. EMI took it to Cedar and now it's included in a new CD collection. Prices will come down though. Cedar predicts it won't be long before the system's out of the studio and turned into a small Dolby-style mechanism built into the family music centre.